We are starting a new series. It's called Come and See. As you can see there, my choice of drink there is coffee and Brandon's is Mountain Dew. And so this series is designed to invite us into conversation about prayer, specifically looking into the Old Testament, looking at four different types of prayer that we can find in the Old Testament. And most of us know that prayer is an important thing. We understand that it deepens our relationship with God, but sometimes it feels more like just a Christian task rather than something that we just truly live off of. I mean, we hear this song, you know, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here in your presence and all this stuff, and then we go home and we're like, God is great, God is good, and that's as deep as we go. And we here at Hope Community Church, we want more for you than that. We want more than these surface level prayers and petitions. We want your prayer life to go deeper with the Lord. And you will be amazed what God can do through people who are obedient in prayer. And so this series is inviting you. Come and see. Come and hear. When everything goes crazy and gets messed up, see what prayer can do in your life. Is that the Holy Spirit? <laughs> He's like, I agree, but no, I'm, I'm super excited about this series because it is something that's important to the church. It's important in my life, and so we have a short video clip to show you how most oftentimes we pray here in the church. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day, Lord Jesus, and all your wonderful, Lord Jesus, things that you, Lord Jesus, do for us, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, uh, I just want to thank you for Annie and Sarah and Molly. I know that with your strength, we can change the world! We can change the world! Woo! Mercury, Venus. Earth, Mars, and we give you the praise. Yes, Jesus. We cannot wait to see what you're going to yes. do today. And we are excited. Oh! Aunt Margaret's really nasty hangnail. And I worship you forever and ever. God, I, uh, I just, uh... Um, toilet paper, deodorant. Speaking of, I need to get some more. Hey God, uh, thanks for bringing us here today. Thank you for all the stuff that you're gonna do in our lives. Uh, the way you're gonna work is absolutely amazing and we are super amped for everything that you hold for us. I just don't know what to say. Hey God, man, you're great. Help me find a mate. Amen. Let's do this. Oh. Salt, garlic salt, sea salt, kosher salt. God, just, just let your doves of knowledge flow from under our fingernails of repentance. So I know a few of you guys who have been some of those right there. Yep. You got the list makers or the people who sneeze. Oh, I get that. I love you teens. So I get that all the time. Just these gross bodily fluids. Um, and you get those who fall asleep during prayer. Who here has ever fallen asleep while praying? Oh, come on. Come on. Y'all have done it too. We get it. So we have those different types. And I have uh, three little uh, pictures here that can also illustrate our prayer life often. If I should die before I wake, I pray, Lord, the dog to take. <laughs> Our prayers so often are very self-centered and, and super funny. And then we have here, I prayed 403 times today. New high score, right? Like prayer is a competition, something to, to complete or something to fulfill. And, and if you miss one day, then you feel horrible, right? 
This one says, Dear God, my prayer for this coming year is a fat bank account and a thin body. Please don't mix them up like you did last year. Amen. Can I get an amen? <laughs> but you see in those pictures in the video, sometimes our prayer requests are super self-centered, are focused on ourselves. Sometimes it does feel like a competition. I have to pray five minutes, or if I skip a day, I have to pray an extra 10 minutes the next day to make up for it so God's not mad at me. Or maybe it's the stupid little request of my best friend's aunt's dog twice removed. And we get ready to pray and we're like, all right, anybody want anything? Like it's an order at McDonald's. And I don't think God wants that in our prayer lives. I think God wants to take us deeper into relationship with him and not have it be so surface level. I also think there's Christians who don't pray at all because it can be confusing. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. And what the series is designed to do is to start having those conversations. When life is happy, when life is crappy, how do you pray? When you're looking at God through the waves or through the sunshine, how are we supposed to pray? And so this morning, we're going to look specifically at praise and where praise is located in our prayers. And I'm not talking about just singing, right? Thank the Lord, because I can't sing. But praise as in reflecting, God, you are good. God, you are great. You are the almighty God, and I love you, and I rejoice in who you are. And so this morning, we're going to look into praise in our prayer life, into Psalm 66. So if you guys want to pull that up in your Bibles, it's page 395 and 396. And what's really cool about this book is the book of Psalms is composed of little psalms or praises, um, prayers, and they were made corporately for people like this all together in the temple. Um, and some of them are more individual. Some of them were praises and, and thanksgiving to God, while others were lament, things that were really burdening the hearts of the people. Written primarily by David, um, the Psalms are located in the Old Testament. And there are also other authors that write psalms, including the one we're going to look at today, which is Psalm 66. It is a corporate song, so people come together. And then it's also something where the writer was writing individually in his heart of what was going on. Again, it was Psalm 66. And this is written to God and to also the people. And the author wanted anyone who would listen to come and see and to come and hear. Let's read it this morning. Shouts for joy to God, all of the earth, sing the glory of his name and make his praises glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. So the author here is saying, listen up, God is good. God is great, and there's some great things going on here, so listen up here. It says, come and see what God has done. Let's read that right there. Come and see what God has done. His awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land, and they passed through the waters on foot, they being the Israelites. Come, let us rejoice him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. We see here the author reflecting on his ancestors, Israel, in the Exodus and all the awesome things that God has done to be faithful to the people. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and has kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refine us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads and we went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. There were hard times for this author and for the people that he came from. We know the history of Israel and the ways that they have followed God and the ways they have walked away from God and followed God and walked away from God. Sound familiar in our own lives sometimes? But God has been faithful to the people, even in their sin and even in their distance from God. Continuing in verse 13, I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you, vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke. When I was in trouble, 
when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer, offer bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let's read that one together as well. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praises were on my tongue. And if I cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God surely has listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love for me. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love for me. So we see here over and over in this psalm, this unknown author just giving praise after praise after praise to God. The God who has rescued Israel, the God who has disciplined us and refined us like silver, the God who has heard our prayers, who has listened to us and who has abundantly cared for us. The author is saying, come and see. Look what the Lord has done. I've spent some time overseas. Um, one of my favorite places is Guyana, South America. And when I'm there, I visit Oriella and Seperuta. They're little villages. It takes about 12 hours downriver to get there. Um, so we just hang up our hammocks and go down. But the worship services there are amazing. And they sing this song that I don't believe is limited to just Guyana, um, but it's called Look What the Lord Has Done. And it goes like, look what the Lord has done. You know, it does that. And they're like, they're singing. They got their tambourines and flags. And it's, he healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was right in time. And they're just praising. And I thought it was so unique. One of the days I was there, there was a 17-year-old that died um, from leukemia. And we were in the village. We were at their house for the funeral. And they pull out this song. And they start singing. Look what the Lord has done. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is horrible and sad. I don't get it. And so I asked them, why are we singing praises? And they're like, come and see. Let me tell you how good my God is and how great my God is and where this child is now. He's with the Lord. They sang this praise and these songs. And I could see the writer here in this psalm saying the same thing. Maybe people would come up to him or her, whoever wrote this, and would say, why are you cheering? You talked about chariots crashing over your heads and water and fire and all this stuff and being refined like silver. How are you praising right now? And the author says, come and see. Come and hear what this awesome Lord has done in my life. It's a beautiful thing. This is a psalm reflecting of God's awesome acts and faithfulness, and it's filled with great praise. And I enjoy it a lot, but I also get a little cynical, which is not typical of me because I'm super positive and bubbly and like optimistic, but I get a little bit of a cynical side coming out sometimes. And I think, why do we even praise God? Why do we always start with praise in our prayer requests? Are we just trying to butter God up? Like, okay, so if I got a really big thing going on, I'm gonna like really front load my prayer with a lot of praise so that God knows I'm serious. Why do we even pray? If God knows all, what's the point? What's the point of this whole series? If God knows everything, why are we wasting our breath? Why do we keep affirming God? Does God need it? I think God has everything he needs. Why does he need our requests? And those are some questions that I've struggled with throughout my young adult life. And if you are here with questions, I want you to know that this is a safe place for you. That Hope Community Church wants to hear those. And you don't have to go through those questions alone. Why do we pray? What's the point? I don't think God's going to strike you down with a bolt of lightning. Watch right now, it's like, psst, oh, no, I'm just kidding. No, God is not going to strike you down for asking a question. God's excited. Thank you for wanting to go deeper. Thank you for wanting to know the truth. I gave you brains to analyze and to critically think. I gave you a heart for a genuine relationship. So please, ask away. And that's why we encourage small groups here. That's why we encourage meeting together because you don't have to go through those questions alone. We can talk about those together. 
And so when these questions came up in our staff meeting, again, we're not going in our little silos and talking about them, but we're talking about them together, saying, why do we do this? What's the point of all of this? Why do we even pray? In the midst of those questions, I was encouraged to look at the example of Jesus. He prayed, right? The Lord's Prayer, and he prayed in the garden. It must be important. And so after looking through some of the, the prayers and praises of Jesus, I see here that, that Jesus prayed to deepen his relationship with the Father. We remember that Jesus was rooted here on earth. He was also rooted in the heavenly kingdom. And so as a fully human, human, he needed God. So he constantly went to the Lord in prayer, often retreated from his group of people to spend time with God. He needed that strength. He needed that relationship. He needed that assurance. Even though he was also God, he needed the Lord. And prayer was the way to get connected to the Lord. Jesus was intentional about giving all the glory to God and spending time with God in prayer. People would come up to him, are you the Messiah? Or how did you heal? Or who do you come in the name of? Or, you know, how can you, you know, who do we pay taxes to? And all these different questions that Jesus was constantly bombarded with. In more or less words, he would say, come and see. Let me show you this God that I'm representing. Let me show you this God that loves you. Let me show you this God that has been so faithful to you. Come and see this one that I'm praying to, the one that I serve. Jesus was intentional about praising God and prayer and giving all of the credit to God through praise. And that deepened his relationship with God. And same with us today. And about the whole concept of does God need to be affirmed? Can I just say, our praises don't fill a void for God. Like, yes, he doesn't need it. But it's kind of like words of affirmation. If any of you guys know this, um, I'm a words of affirmation person. So you have the love languages, right? So you have acts of service and physical touch and all those different things. Mine is words of affirmation. If you say something nice to me, I'm like, oh, you, you like me. Like, this is awesome. And I think a lot of that is our relationship with God as well. We come to God and we say, God, you're awesome. God, you've been faithful. God, you have blessed us. Thank you for being who you are. God doesn't need to hear it, but it's good to hear and when you're down and out and you have a friend that comes up to you and says, I believe in you. You're a person worthy of love. You're genuine. And I appreciate you being a genuine person in my life. How does that make you feel? Like, oh, thanks. <laughs> right? Like you feel good. And that's just my way of being vulnerable with you and saying, you know what? I respect our mutual relationship and commitment to one another. And I'm going to show you that by reminding you that you're worth it. And in similar ways, we tell God that as well. We say, God, I'm being vulnerable with you because you've been so vulnerable with me, and I'm going to tell you how much you mean to me. It's not for God always. It's always, I mean, it's always for God. Our praises are for God. But it helps remind us who we are and who God is. When the going gets tough, it reminds us just like an alarm clock, it reminds us to get up, or you have an app on your phone that reminds you, you know, you have to go pick up the groceries or go pick up the kids. When we praise God, it reminds us where our roots are. And when we take time to praise God, it reminds us about that relationship. I have a picture of some journals that I've written over the last few years. Um, I started writing them my junior year of high school and continuing to write them now. Those journals are filled with tears and screaming. Those journals are filled with praises in three different countries that I've been to, four different countries I've been to, and just this journey. And at the end of every year, so 2017, I always sit down and I read through some of them just to reflect and to see how faithful God has been. And that's really important in our lives when it comes to praise. Because sometimes we get stuck. God, I have nothing to praise you for. God, you know, you've given me kids and life and whatever, but those kids are so wayward. And this life, you know, I'm going to the hospital all the time and I'm sick. Is this really life, God? And we sometimes get in a pickle. 
how do we even praise God when there's nothing good to look forward to? Some of you guys know I just lost both my grandparents five months ago, one of which we had the funeral last week, and that is not easy. And yet we're commanded to pray and praise God. And sometimes I don't have it in me. Sometimes I don't want to praise God. But I look at the psalm we read this morning. This come and see, look what the Lord has done. I open up my journals and I say, look what the Lord has done. This is a hard time right now. Things are really heavy and hard, but look what the Lord has done. Come and see, come and hear how faithful God has been. There was a moment my junior year of high school, I was really struggling with some stuff, and my youth pastor's wife was like one of my strong mentor women in my life. And I remember coming to her, and I'm like, I am so stressed, I am so sad, and she's like, I know what you need to do. It'll make it all better. I'm like, okay, like I'm ready. She said, praise God. I was like, say what? <laughs> like, do you not see I'm crying right now? Like, I can't praise God. There's nothing to praise God for. That was one of the most transformational advice that I've ever received my whole life. Was in those moments, praise God. In those moments when you're happy, those moments when you're sad, you sit down in prayer and you praise God for the faithfulness that he has been in your life, in the life of this church. There's always a reason to praise because God has never given up on his people and he's never going to give up on you. God cares about our prayers, and he deserves our praises as we journey with God. There's a quote that I have on the screen that has been very comforting over the years when I consider prayer. It says, our confidence in the power of prayer is rooted in the promises that God is continually working for the good in the midst of ambiguous situations, and that God's purpose will prevail in the end. And that psalmist, he knew it. He was talking about being refined like silver. He was talking about the power of God and all the things his ancestors went through. He knew this to be true, that God's promises will still stand, that God is working for the good of the people. And so that's why I praise. That's why he's inviting us, come and see, come and hear. God is still good. God is still working. God is still faithful in their life, in my life, in your life. Listen up. Praise God. Prayer is not about just filling time. It's not something we do just because we're Christians. It's something we do because we are able to connect with God. It affirms our relationship with God, and it helps us realize that we are a we and not just a me, because together we join in prayer. Together we join in worship. We are not alone. Prayer and praise deepens our relationship with God. And so maybe you're entering into 2018 and you're like, you know, I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to start listening to different music or I'm going to start paying attention to my spouse more. You know, whatever you're doing, I challenge you to put prayer on the top of that list and not just prayer, but prayers of praise. Because how many of our prayers actually look like that Psalm 66, right? Like, come and see what the Lord has done. He's been faithful. He reigns. He has power. Not very often. Maybe the first three minutes, if that. I want it to be different this year for me and for you. So there's three things that we encourage you to do here at Hope Community. What did you hear? How can you respond to it? And how can you share it with other people? And I pray that today you heard that God is faithful to his people. That prayer deepens our relationship with God. And that praise also brings us closer to the Lord. And I want us to share with our small groups and people around us. And for responding this morning, it's going to be a little bit of a hard challenge. So get ready, right? Buckle up, okay? I want your prayers this week to only be prayers of praise. I want you to only pray in praise, telling God how awesome he is, how faithful he's been to you, to the church, to the family, even if you need to go all the way back to Israel, how faithful God has been to us and praise him. And you might be saying, well, you don't understand. This is going to be a really hard week this week. Or what if someone comes up to me and asks me to pray for them? Or, you know, God can take care of your prayers for a week. 
Okay, God can take care of those hard requests. God can take care of all those concerns. Just put them on hold for one week. And I challenge you to just pray with praise in your heart. And as I was thinking about that, I was like, there's probably going to be some hiccups, right? There's probably going to be some, some reasons to not do that. And I have a few listed here that we can go through quickly. It's what if I don't pray at all? How can I start praying with praise if I don't even pray at all? Well, guess what? Today's a great day to start. It may feel awkward or artificial at first to be able to bow down or stand up or close your eyes or whatever you want to do. It may feel a little weird at first, like, God, I've never really talked to you. It's been a few years, a few decades. Today's the day. It's a new year, a new you, and God wants to bring you into fullness with this church. And so if you haven't started praying, start today. Try it out and see what God can do in your life. Number two, what if you don't have a quiet place to pray? I understand that with being a college student, you know, a while back ago and having six roommates and it's crazy, but I don't don't know what it's like to have kids, right? Like they run around and they scream and they burp and fart and stuff and it's kind of like throws off your prayer mojo, right? But I encourage you, wake up early. Stay up late. When you're driving or they're sleeping in the car, find times to pray. Time is a commodity these days. And we prioritize what's important there, and that's how we spend our time. Let's make prayer something important this year. Let's make that a part of how we spend our time. What if I can't quiet my mind and stay still? (laughs) Story of my life. (laughs) I have a really hard time staying focused, and I always have to be moving or talking or thinking about something. That is hard to do. I kind of think about it how you look at a baby, right? A newborn baby and they're cooing and cawing, and you're like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. Moments are passing, but you're completely unconscious of time. You're just looking at this baby. Or when you look at a fire, right? And it's just going, you're sitting around a bonfire and you're just enjoying it. And you're like, oh oh my gosh, what time is it? I had no idea. You're just so enveloped in this, in this view, in this gaze, in this moment. And so when you come to God in prayer, when you come to God in praise, be like that. Be present with the lover of your soul. And be prepared for distractions. It's okay. Be patient with them. Be gentle with them. If they come up, don't say, oh, I'm a crappy prayer. See, I can't do this, God. I told you I have ADD. Like, no, okay? God maybe had ADD. I have no idea. And so what I want you to do is in those moments, just be patient with yourself. Getting distracted. All right. You can even write it down. And if it's something that's continually coming up, maybe the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you something. So you don't have to be mean to those distractions. Acknowledge them, then return your gaze back to God and praise Him. What if I don't have enough time? Again, you prioritize what's important to you. You can be committed and creative in your prayer time with the Lord. And we can do that together. You don't have to do it alone. We can be creative in our prayer time together as a family here. What if I don't see the faithfulness of God? I hear you, Amanda. I hear you say praise, but what if I don't see God doing anything in my world? Look beyond you. Maybe there's something going on in your community or in the world at large or something in the past or something you're anticipating in the future. Or look at your cross point. We have different moments in there where we talk about the generosity of the church. We have a Kairos moment where God has brought us from a place where we've been to where God wants us, to a place we're going. Beautiful moments that people in this church write. If you have nothing else to praise or you don't see God's faithfulness anywhere else, open up your cross point. We'll give you something to praise because we believe it's important to praise God. Last one, what if I don't feel like praising God? I don't care, it's not about you about God. You may not feel like it, but God deserves it. It'll take us deeper with God. It'll take us deeper with each other. So if you don't feel like it, try. You'd be amazed in those moments when you are so consumed with anger or hurt or pain, what praise can do just melts away. So again, this morning, I encourage you, let your prayer life this week Just be bathed with praise. Leave the requests for another week. 
If you want to write them down so you remember the next week, do it. But just, just clear your mind of all of those requests, all of those burdens, all of those cares. And just praise God. And you'll be amazed how deep the Father will take you into his love. So what I want you to do this morning is those, um, what are they called? Connection cards. I almost said cross point again. I'm like, no, it's in the cross point. Right, connection cards. What I want you to do is take that out, and I want you to write on there, praise prayer. If you are committing for a whole week to be only in praise, write praise prayer down. And I want to praise God for that this week. I want to be able to read through those and say, I am proud of them. Thank you, God, for their commitment to praise. Thank you, God, for their commitment to praise. And so if you are saying yes, for a whole week, it's going to be all about praising God. I'm going to look at my cross point. I'm going to look online. I'm going to look at the world around me, and I'm going to slow down. And I'm going to be patient with myself and find a reason to praise God. Because God is worthy to be praised, and he does exceedingly abundantly above anything we can imagine. So you're going to find reasons to praise. I believe it. So let's pray this morning. God, we love you. And God, you are good. And this morning, we are committing to you a full week of our prayer time for you just to bask in your presence, to be so filled with your love and joy. And when people ask, we're going to say, come and see what the Lord has done in my life. Come and see what the Lord is doing in Hope Community Church. Come and see what the Lord is doing to Christianity all over the world, God. This week, we're going to be intentional. This year, we will be intentional about praying to you and praising you no matter what 2018 holds, God. You are worthy of our praise. Take us deeper this morning, Lord. And get ready to blow our minds. We love you. Amen.